In part 9 of our online series, Introduction to Optics and Lens Design, I'm going to talk about kinoform lenses. Now what's a kinoform lens? Well, it's also called a diffractive optical element, or a DOE. Uh, it's similar to a Fresnel lens, if you've ever seen them. Um, they're these uh, plastic things with circular grooves in them with sloping zones. Um, except with the DOE, it's a, it's a special case. <coughs> Uh, they calculate the height of each zone such that the phase shift going from one zone to the next is exactly one wavelength of light. And when you do this, uh, it turns out the slope angle in between zones is just right so that a ray of light coming in like this and being refracted at the zone, it goes off at an angle, which is the same angle you'd get by light that's diffracted from these zones acting like a grating. And when those angles are the same, that, 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 that's called the Bragg condition, by the way, um, it turns out the efficiency is very high. It's close to 100%. It's really kind of a neat uh, concept. And I have to uh, mention that, by the way, this picture is greatly expanded because the height of these zones is actually measured in millionths of an inch, and, and you wouldn't be able to see it with your eye if I didn't blow it way, blow it way up like this. Okay, here's the assignment. We're going to expand a helium neon laser beam, 0.35 millimeter waist, to a beam that's 10 millimeters diameter and try to make it uniform. And we're going to do this with two elements. Each one has a DOE on one side. Now, this is going to be the starting RLE file, um, and I'll, I'll walk you through it. One wavelength, which is the helium neon wavelength, units millimeters. <clears throat> and this is going to be in, uh, using object type G, OBG, which you haven't used yet, which is the Gaussian input. This says the, the waste radius is 0.35 millimeters, and we're only going to look out to as far as 1 over the e squared point. Now, this kind of object always puts surface 1 at the waist, and let's suppose you want the first element, let's say 22 millimeters to the right, so we give it a thickness. Surface 2 is the first side of, of the first element. We give it a short radius because you want to expand the beam. And a glass table, S, a glass type SF6, which is a nice high index glass. And we give it a thickness of, uh, say, 20 millimeters, which puts the second element then 20 millimeters to the right. And surface 3 is going to be assigned a surface type, unusual surface shape 16, which is the way you can model a simple DOE. Now that surface requires some additional input. We have to give it a construction wavelength, which is just the helium neon wavelength. And we give it an index, the same as the SF6. Uh, the program will use that index when it calculates the height of the zone so it gets the right slope angle to get the Bragg condition. And we give it a normalizing factor, which is a good idea. Now surface 4 is the first side of the second element, and it's also going to be a DOE. Give it the, some input. Um, surface 5 is then the second side of the second element. And from there we're going to go a distance of 50 millimeters and we're going to reach two more surfaces, number 6 and 7, which we need because the lens is going to be put in a focal mode. Okay, so we've used object type OBG, and you can look in the help file to read about it. And we're going to model the DOEs as unusual surface shape 16, which you can also read about in the help file. OK, what was that word, A focal? <coughs> well, the output from our lens is going to be collimated. That means the image is at infinity. And it's a real bad idea to, to try to model infinity with a digital computer. So we have to do things differently. We put the lens in what we call A focal mode. And in that mode, you, re you need two dummy surfaces at the end instead of just one image plane. And that's where the program converts from linear to angular coordinates. Now, you don't need to add any kind of perfect lens to the system to get that, because um, that, that happens automatically if you're in a focal mode. The image output is in radians, it's in angles, and in the RLE file, you just give a declaration, a focal. OK, this is our starting design, which is not all that great, but uh, we haven't really designed it yet. So the, the Gaussian beam comes in from a laser, hits surface 2. It gets expanded, but that's all that happens. It is not made uniform, and it's not collimated. It still has a Gaussian um, intensity profile at this point. So we're going to change that. We're going to make a macro, 
and let me walk you through this. A parameter file, very two radius, three thickness, and we're getting very three G terms. Now the DOEs, like other aspheric shapes, use the G variables uh, to vary those terms. And we're going to vary three of them on surface three, and three terms on surface four. Right there. And in the AND file, where we define the merit function, <coughs> it mostly consists of flux aberrations. Right there. That's how we're going to get uniform flux coming out. And we also control, let's see, automatic edge control, center control. I'm saying upper limit of 150 for the total length, so it doesn't get too long. And in this line, I'm saying minimize to a target of 5 with a weight of 1, add in color P the Y coordinate of the upper rim ray on surface 5. So this will get us our output beam diameter of 10 millimeters. And down at the end, I'm having some, some ray grids, sagittal rays, generate sagittal, but correct the OPDs of the ray. And I'm also correcting some uh, transverse aberrations, GSR, because it's sometimes a good idea to uh, do both of them. Now, how did I know which G variables to vary? Well, if you type help USS <coughs> and look at type 16, you'll see it's got all kinds of aspheric terms. Some of them apply to the substrate, which we're not going to use here. We're just going to look at these terms, which apply to the OPD expansion. And we're going to look at terms which start at G number 26. Okay, we run this macro, and the lens is indeed much better. The light is collimated coming out. Um, and if you look at the, the ray, how the rays are distributed here, they're all scrunched together at the edge, and they're more spread out in the middle, and that's exactly what you want to do to try to make it more uniform. But we always have to ask, can we do better? Let's try varying some of the higher order coefficients. So add to the variable list terms up to G31, which is the Y12 term. And when we do that, we find, gee, nothing changed much. We really had a pretty good design. <clears throat> okay, but now we have to check this design. We're going to look at the flux uniformity. So we type the flux command in the command window, 100 zones on surface 6, and oh my goodness, look at that. The Gaussian uh, profile has been turned into almost a perfectly, perfectly straight line. So it's an excellent design, but now we have to ask, can anybody make it? Because if the spatial frequency is too high, uh, well, fabrication technology might have a problem with it. So we're going to use the mapping program for this. We're going to use menu mapping, MMA, opens a dialog, <coughs> and you select uh, surface frequency on surface 4, mapped over the pupil, um, object point 0 on axis. The ray pattern is going to be a, a, a rectangular grid uh, confined to a circle with a grid number of 7, and you want digital output. That's one of many things the mapping program can do, and it gives you this picture. It's a map of the surface grading frequency. And look here, 97 plus cycles per millimeter. Hmm. That works out to just under 10 microns per cycle, which might not be too easy to make. So just as an exercise, let's see if we can reduce that. Can we get that down to, say, 50 cycles per millimeter? Well, it's actually pretty easy to do. We can add a new variable to the PANT file, uh, surface 5 radius, which is flat at the moment. And we're going to add a new aberration to the ant file. Minimize to a target of 50. Add in color P the surface frequency at upper rim ray on surface 5. So we run that, and the spatial frequency is right on 50, and the flux uniformity is just as good as before. It looks like we have accomplished our mission. Now we're going to test this thing. We're going to run the diffraction propagation program, DPROP, to see the intensity profile of this thing. <clears throat> let, first of all, let's look at it on surface 3, which is coming out of the first DOE. And uh, indeed, it has the Gaussian profile, which we'd expect, because we didn't, didn't make it uniform yet. So now let's do the same thing on surface 6. And oh my goodness, look at that. You couldn't ask for a better flat top profile. This is just uh, just great. Okay, we're almost done. Let's assume someone wants to build this thing. <clears throat> well, one way to build it is to uh, uh, take a picture of, of, of a mask. The D-mask program can actually make that picture. 
This is a picture of, of the fringes of the, of the of the zones in our in our DOE, and if you photograph this and transfer it to a substrate, well, that's one way you can make these things. Okay, if you want to see this, some more information about this lesson, I've posted it online. Go to my website, osdoptics.com, and click the online tutorial button, and then click on Lesson 32, and you can read more about it. And that's the end of our lesson on kiniform lenses. Thank you.